All God's people say, Amen. Amen. You know, I didn't realize we have a few Bibles, different sizes of few Bibles. I just grabbed the Bible and then look for Titus, right? It's about 887, right? Page 887. And then it, did, it wasn't there. I said, what? <laughs> what happened? But it different, different uh, Bibles and different pages, yeah? Um, so um, don't get confused. And uh, it, 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 Titus is a so tiny book. It just squeezed in between the books, so you have to memorize the numbers, page numbers, otherwise you get lost. Now, hmm? you know, I don't know much about football games as much as you do. Everybody knows. So if I make a mistake, then you correct me, all right? And I heard about a football game happened in a jungle, and uh, the animals decided to have it. And one was a uh, rhinoceros, uh, um, right? Not, right? Okay, you say it. Rhinoceros. rhinoceros. Okay, I'm gonna say rhino. All right? <laughs> rhinoceros team, and then tiger team. Now, the problem was. No one could stop rhino, rhinoceros. And whenever he got the ball, Tiger's team tried to stop him and piled up on, upon him, but couldn't stop him. He remembered to make a touchdowns. And at the kickoff, opening kickoff, and the rhinoceros team made seven to nothing. How that happened? You understand? Seven to nothing, but uh, uh, the remaining of the first quarter, Tiger team and uh, be able to keep the ball away from, please say it for me, Ry rhinoceros. So it was okay, right? Seven to nothing. And then at the second quarter, uh-oh, Right, rhinoceros got the ball, right? And they attacked him as they did at the first, quarter, uh, first quarter, and but they weren't successful to stop him, right, at the first quarter. But this time, they were successful, stopped him. So, to investigate what happened, right? And they umpired all the animals. Guess what, who was down there? Centipede. <laughs> centipede blow a fatal attack on rhinoceros. So, Tiger said, Good job, Centipede. And we needed you. Where were you at the opening kickoff? And the Centipede said, What? I was still putting on my shoes. The point I try to draw from that is this, that we are all gifted. And I often complain about ungiftedness. I, but the Bible says each one of us are gifted, is gifted. And the spirit of the living God pour out his gifts and talents to each one of us so that we all pull together as a team, A, we can win the game, no problem, right? We can be successful in our lives, in our church. We can bring our church to prosper and successful. Mm. Don't you think? Yes. yes. And, and when we all decided, right? We wish, we agree that our church be what? Prosper and successful. Yes. All right. <laughs> That's why we are in the uh, Bible study of the book of uh, Titus, right? Titus is divinely written self-help book to teach any churches how to make their church successful. Right? So we've studied, it's only three chapters, three lessons. And the first lesson was what? About appointing godly leaders. 
right? And we talked about the godly leaders, that we all are godly leaders, they have to be godly leaders. We are all are in the leadership because of previous leadership and current leadership and future leadership, right? And uh, because we are chosen race and chosen nation and royal priesthood. So we say believers, priesthood of all believers. That's uh, 1 Peter 2, 9. Yeah? So, and then second lesson was, so the godly leaders should live what? Godly life. And should teach others how to live godly life. If we don't live godly life, we cannot teach others to live godly life. What was that? How do we live godly life? And we talked about determination, right? We've got to be determined to what? reflect God's grace. Hmm? and discipline to imitate, demonstrate Christ-likeness in our lives. And then chapter three is a reminding of chapter one and two in different ways, approach different ways. So that's where we are right now. Okay, lesson three. The lesson three, after this Sunday, it's a power lady, right? Lesson three, what is the title of lesson three? Lesson three, title is this. Hmm? Do good and expose lies in light of God's mercy. That's what we're going to ponder upon this morning. Do good and expose lies in light of God's mercy to make a church successful, to make any Christian life successful. Amen? So I've come up with two M's. I'm going to call it M and M's of integrity. How's that? That, that is easy to remember, right? And in, what is integrity? It's the essence, bottom line of a Christian character. Bottom line of godly people, godly leaders, how to live godly life, right? Integrity is a, what? Honesty, trustworthiness, huh? and doing good, whether people are looking at you or not. Right? Eager to do good, what is good? We've heard that. Transparency. All that is required. And the verse 2, it says what? The, the chap- uh, verse 2, it says what? Huh? Slender no one and do good. Whatever is good, what is it? Be peaceable and uh, kind. Hmm? considerate, gentle to anyone, everyone, no matter what. And the first one is obedient, obey, right? Yes, that is the bottom line. Keeping integrity, the, the, the living righteous life. Good, right, excellent, moral. The principle of our moral standard is what? From the sound doctrine, from the word of God, right? So how do we do that? Let's look at verse 9. Before verse 9, verse 3 and 8, right? Verse 3 and 8 is to make a long story short, it is saying why we should do what is good, why we should do, eager to do what is good, is that reason why? Because I am a child of God. We are saved by grace, justified by his sacrifice, and we are saved to do good. That is our purpose. And uh, your Bible study will lead you to memorize the whole thing, and I hope you succeed. And if you can't, this is one line. Why should you do good all the time? Why should you do good? Because I am saved to do good. I am a child of Most High God because of Jesus, sacrifice of our Lord Jesus. That's it. 
You've heard it. You know it all the time. But it needs to be hmm, practiced, demonstrated, right? So, verse nine. It says, therefore, verse nine, avoid, avoid foolish controversies, genealogies, arguments, and quarrels. What about what the law, right? And because why? It is unprofitable and useless. Now, they, you know, the first converter, the first church, you know, the, uh, the, they were in argument over who saves, what saves our life. So, we are, Gospel of Jesus says, saved by grace alone, faith alone, right? Today, I just saying that you've got to what? Circumcise to be saved. You've got to do, follow our traditions to be saved. So, Apostle Paul says, that's a nonsense. That's unprofitable, useless. Don't engage in the arguments, discussions about it. In other words, that's a foolishness, right? Why do people do foolish things? Why does a church go through foolish arguments? Controversies, quarrels, why do they do? Because full of foolish people. When we look at the uh, churches or homes or any places going through uh, foolish arguments, we say from the outsider viewpoint, we say what? Grow up, huh? immature, right? So immature, so petty, right? Even our Bible says so. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 14. Verse 14, it says what? When we are mature, then we all wave by the every wind. We all turn and toss around by every waves. We will stand strong. But even when we are immature, we will go through all those led by all by winds and the turn, turn and toss. Now, do you think we are mature church? Only one yes. <laughs> Honest. <laughs> you know, I was the Google, right? Google, Google. Nowadays, you, you can Google anything, everything about yourself, about the church, and. So I googled uh, what are the silly, foolish issues that church is going through and break the church up, divide the church up, right? And you've heard about the, uh, the, 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 the decisions of uh, color of carpet or the music, right? Praise music or organ music or piano music whatsoever. They have a heated argument and they split the church. That's known. To everybody and in our trial association there is a church couldn't paint the sanctuary and they decided white color right and brought to the congregation we're gonna decide we have decided to paint them you know inside the sanctuary white oh there was a person and group is it off-white or egg-white? <laughs> or pure white? So this, the, the, the opinions got divided. So they, can, they cannot, they still haven't painted their church. We laugh at it, right? It doesn't happen to us. We are more mature than that, right? And some, a lady left the church because there was discrepancies in the budget for 2019, 10 cents, over argument over 10 cents, and somebody says, I will just donate 10 cents to, to make it right. 
And then the person who raised the issue took off. Silly, immature, right? And then, then this, this is another one. Somebody left the church, some group, tiny group of uh, people left the church because somebody hid a vacuum cleaner. I don't know why they hid the vacuum cleaner. It would be easy to just give them, right? But some reason they hid the vacuum cleaner to a certain group of people and they left the church and they start calling everybody. And they're not going to say they left the church because of vacuum cleaner, right? They know it's silly. They know it's... So that's a final blow. Ah, uh, we will suffer this and we will suffer that. And then soon, guess what? People decided to go over this vacuum cleaner side, on hidden vacuum cleaner side. Hello, grow up. You know, we because when we look at from the outside of this is a viewpoint, it's so silly. But when we are in that argument, it's not silly because we are in the right, and they are in the right. So. Two rights cannot make it right. That's what's happening in the church, full of smart cookies doing foolish things. You know, a guy was a drinker, and uh, his friend says, why do you always drink? And you are drowned and alcohol and the guy says i drink to drown my sorrows my troubles that's why i drink so the friend says after you drown all your sorrows and your troubles why do you still keep on drinking right and the guy says well my troubles are excellent swimmers they swim right back up You know, desires of a flesh. When immature people make decisions, make comments, and make a whole shebang of controversial issues because they led by the desires of a flesh. We all, we all do that. I don't know how many times I argue with my husband. I didn't say it. I am right. And he said, yes, you said that. No, no, no. Arguments we spend waste our lifetime <laughs> because <laughs> because I want to be right, right? I want to hear I am sorry from who, right? Oh, I misunderstood you from who? Not me. You said it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And so we give in to temptation to be right, to lead by uh, emotional righteousness, emotional needs, meet the emotional needs. So what can we do to mature ourselves to be good Christian, to mature, to be more like Jesus? We've got to look at what? Jesus, right? And Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 and 16 says what? Jesus was tempted just like us. Jesus was tempted just like us, but he didn't, what? Give in to temptation. Therefore, he understands what we are going through. He understands. He, he tried to help us when we go to him. He doesn't scold us, you foolish. He doesn't do that. He tried to help us, and, and when we listen, look up to him, he will provide the way. He will give us the strength to be matured Christian. And we've got to determine, and we've got to be disciplined to act as a, what? Mature Christian. Mature in the Lord. And that's how we keep our integrity and that's how we make this church successful church, prospering church. Amen? So what is the first M? Mature 
in the Lord. Amen? The second, second M is this. <clears throat> Look at the first ten. Why should we um, try to mature in the Lord? Because we are saved by grace and to do good. Because I am a child of the Most High God. That's uh, verses 3 to 8, right? That has to be in background, the motivation of what we are doing. Try to mature. Now, second M is this. Verse 10. Verse 10 says what? One, a divisive person. Once and twice. And then what? Nothing to do with them, right? That's harsh, right? And uh, have nothing to do with them. What does that mean? Give them a room to grow, time to grow, time to repent, and warn them once and twice. That's it. And we see these discrepancies in the word of God now. Apostle Paul teaches Titus to do that, but our Lord teaches us differently. Do you remember? You've got to, you've got to open all your Bibles this morning. I, I'm, I'm not going to tell you the pages since I found out pages are all different. And if with, you can use your phone and look up Matthew chapter 18, verses 15, 16, and 17. And there, I will wait for you. And yes, this is uh, your life model, and this is a divine method. Jesus said it to each one of us, to Peter, to the disciples. So we are going to practice this one. A divine method of how to deal with div this divisive person, divisive issues, divisive persons. Now, Matthew 18, 15 says what? If your brother sins, sins against you or sins against God or sins against the congregation, it doesn't matter, it, it, right? Divisive person, it's all included, sins. If your brother sins, what? You go to that person directly and point out his fault. And then what's the purpose? To win the, if he agrees, he accepts and win the brother over. So the purpose, expose lies in light of God's mercy. It is a purpose is what? to bring reconciliation, restoration of the relationship. And if he doesn't listen, what? Jesus says, go talk to them again with some other people. And if they still don't listen, then go bring whole church, right? And do we do that? Normally, we skip the whole process and do it at the gathering, right? <laughs> A church minister says, the Lord who has led me to be your pastor, now leading me to other church. So this is my last Sunday. Everybody was stunned, right? But the director of choir stood up and sang, what a friend we have in Jesus. <laughs> and half the congregation followed singing. What is that? They didn't go to directly. Now, you know, we wink at the sins and we say, I am afraid. I am afraid to go directly to point out what's wrong with that person because Jesus also said it's a discrepancy, you say. Jesus also said that Matthew 7, chapter 7, verse 4, I believe, and he says, don't judge others. Look at 
Why you look at the sawdust in your brother's eye, ignoring your two by four in your eyes, right? So we try not to go, right? And there was a guy reading the newspaper, and he was reading out loud. Tom Jolly, who has been working at a bank, stole one hundred thousand dollars, and ran off with the banker's uh, president's wife, bank president's wife, and stole his car as well. And the lady who was listening to that reading says, oh, I wonder who's going to teach Sunday school this coming Sunday. Hmm? She knew. Right? She knew brother's sin, but who am I to talk to him? I'm afraid if I point out that he's going to get mad at me or dislike me. Now, this is a divine approach. Go talk to them directly. The purpose is what? Restoration and rest, uh, rest, reconciliation, right? I am going off the track here. Restoration and reconciliation, if that is your purpose, and what are we going to do with the don't point out the uh, sawdust in the brother's eye? How are we going to reconcile with that? I'm going to point to your wrongdoings. The goal, talk to that person first, is not, okay, listen carefully, it's not going to that person point out that person's fault. You, okay, the person who wronged to you, you've got hurt, and you've piled up, and you talk to somebody, deacon, and smart deacon will say, go talk to that person directly. Oh, I am afraid, I am fearful. You know why? Because you are going there to point out you did something wrong. That's why. If your purpose is reconciliation and, and, and restoration, you've got to go Jesus first and take care of your heart. So you bring what? God's mercy with you. God's mercy is what? Forgiveness. Whether that person is, uh, um, when I talk to that person, whether uh, she or he is a repenter of that or not, is a, I don't care, right? I've reconciled. I've, ha- I've forgiven that action. That's what Jesus wants us to do. You put the two together, right? We're not pointing out sadness in, in the eyes of a brother but pointing out the two by four in my eyes. So you approach with the God's mercy. You say, the, the sentence always say, I, right, instead of you. You hurt me instead of I've hurt. You did this instead. I felt, right, when, you, when I experienced such and such a thing. But I reconcile with God. And I am here to tell you, confess how I've felt all these years, all this time, or yesterday. Don't pile it up. That's a, we know the word of God, right? But we don't do it. We don't practice it because what? Hmm? Fear. And we say, no longer, what, slaves to fear because I am a child of Most High God. Let God's light, let God's love, let God's mercy go before you. You pray before you go talk to that person or you've seen the sins of your brothers and sisters. And we've got to master in that. Master. 
right? Yogi, um, you know, when we know how to do things, you do it over and over and over again, then you become one. Good at it. We've got to be good at applying our divine method to carry this church to the next level, to make this church successful. So what would be ne next M? Yeah, master. We've got to master a divine method. Amen? The amen is so light. You are not convinced? No, this is the word of God saying, right? Divine method. I mean, so we've got to good at it. Master, divine method. Got it. Got it. All right. There was a guy who put his car in a ditch. Luckily, there was a farmer with a horse to help him. So the farmer hitched the, his horse to the car, right? And his horse's name is Buddy. But farmer keep calling wrong names to pull the car out. Nelly, pull. Coco, pull. Buddy didn't move. Tom, pull, pull, pull. Buddy didn't move. Finally, farmer says, Buddy, pull. Right back up pull the car out. So the motorist asked the farmer, what on earth did you command the pull the car out, calling all wrong names, all the wrong names? Do you know why? The farmer says, my horse is blind. If he thinks he's the only one to that, take that one out. He won't budge. <laughs> That's so funny. But he believes everybody's in it, then he will. A lot of times, a lot of times, good Christians ready to give up to live a good life, a godly life, and keep the integrity in the whole wide world, they think they are only the one trying to do good. Everybody else is not doing good, and they succeed, they prosper. What on earth am I doing this? The Bible says what? Colossians 6, 9, the Bible says, don't let us give up doing what is good. Because in due time, you will reap rewards. Amen? If when every one of us are doing good, then our church will prosper. Today, we are celebrating installation of new officers and coordinators and new leadership and celebrate past leadership. And as we do, we pray and hope and pray that every one of us uh, work on these lessons. First lesson was about godly leaders, yodeling, sound doctrine, sound conduct, yield to Two wise, right? Yield to the spirit of a living God. And second lesson, how to teach, uh, how to live a uh, living godly life. It's two M's, right? Was it? Oh, no, two D's. Determine to reflect God's grace. And discipline. Ooh, good. Discipline ourselves to be more like a Christ exemplify Christ. Now, these uh, three, two M's, uh, the lesson three, it's uh, what? Mature in the Lord and master the divine method in operating the church. Amen?
That's when God's going to bless our socks off. So recap. What is M to M? Huh? How come it's not coming up? What is 2M? Mature in the Lord and master divine methods. Hallelujah, you smart cookies. That's when God's going to bless your socks off.